Good to be here today. Amen. I want you to uh, turn with me in your Bible book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter number 2, and let's have a word of prayer. Father, I believe the book, and you know that, Lord. I believe it. My Father, I pray that you give me wisdom in Scripture, give me the gift of teaching. And this morning, Father, give the folks ears to hear and a heart that's receptive. Heavenly Father, a heart that's discerning. Lord, they, they, have, they have been exposed now for day in and day out to propaganda, lies, deceit, ignorance. Now, Father, we open thy word for wisdom and light. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter number 2. It says in verse 1, We beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. So the apostle had made it clear in 1 Thessalonians what that meant, to be gathered together unto him. They knew what he was talking about. And it's commonly referred to as the catching up of the saints or the calling away of the church of God or the rapture. That you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the, the day of the Lord is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Amen. How many agree with what I just read? How many caught what I just did? All right, some of you caught it. All right, if you, how many's got a different Bible in here this morning? We won't throw you out, nobody will jump on you. If you happen to come in with an NIV, New American Standard Version, Good News for Modern Man, Good Speed, uh, RV, Revised Version, uh, any of the new Bibles, well, they all say Day of the Lord. Your Bible, which is a Bible, says the Day of Christ. Amen. There's a vast difference between the two. Amen. So people who have new Bibles are looking for the Day of the Lord, and if you have the right Bible, you're looking for the Day of Christ. I've, uh, you know, I've been, I've been for some time now, head over heels in study, uh, in doing some heavy duty research. And uh, the, dig the deeper I dig into this stuff, the, uh, the more revealing it is because I marvel at how far along we've come. I begin to discover things that, um, that I never imagined it had, it, that has gotten that far. Now, how many of you in this morning, in this house this morning, are uh, uh, simply aware of the existence of what's called Obamacare? Okay. That is the over 900-page document that Nancy Pelosi, at the time the Speaker of the House, you know, encouraged them to vote on. And she said, now, once we vote on it, we can read it and find out what's inside. Do you think there's something wrong with that? Seriously, though, I mean, here we are now, and we're, these are supposed to be intelligent people, and they're supposed to be representatives of their constituency. These are, rep these are people who are voted into office to represent you, and they vote on a document that they haven't even read. Now, what does that say to you? Really? Democrat or Republican? Makes no, we're not talking about politics. Democrat, Republican, Whig, Federalist, whatever independent, they vote on something that they haven't even read. Now what, what would you do with someone's political career? You'd put it to an end immediately. So what, when, what happened then? What happened? Let's an analyze it a little further. What happened? If they voted on a document they've never even read, but they voted by the urging of the Speaker of the House, all right, what's going on? What's happening? What is it? They got an agenda. They have an agenda. They're going to do it. They're going to ram it down your throat. And so what did they do? They put complete trust in the ones who drew up. They didn't know that they were giving their house away. They had no idea what they were voting for. They had complete trust in the, in the author, authors of that, uh, that piece of legislation, right? Now that's how things get done in Washington, D.C. 
Don't you think it's time that we throw every one of them out just about Amen. and put a whole new bunch in there? Amen. I think it is. Now, here's what's happened. Since Obamacare was voted in as the law of the land, and that 900 pages now has come under the scrutiny of a lot of people, people are beginning to find out what's in that thing. That becomes the story. That's where you should be alarmed. That's where you should be greatly alarmed today. How many of you have ever heard of a, of a, uh, of a uh, uh, senator, state senator from the state of Georgia, our sister state, her name is Nancy Schaefer. How many have heard of this lady? A few of you have. And when you raise your hand, you raise it in concern, don't you? You, you think something's going on here. This lady is a decent lady, a Christian. She was 73 years old. She was a, represent, she was a senator from the state of Georgia. In... Uh, 2004, Georgia State Senator Nancy Schaefer. Now, listen carefully, folks. This is going to tie straight in with Obamacare, and this is going to t this is going to come right where you live right now. Okay, I'm not talking about some some thing that's out here in, in, in some wacko <coughs> land. I'm talking about where you live right now. I'm telling you, I'm talking about what you're living in right now, and how much of the new world order has already been implemented, and how much they've already got a stranglehold on your life and you don't even know it. This state senator from Georgia, 2004, Nancy Schaefer, found evidence of deep corruption within the federal child protective services system, which handles children designated as wards of the state. 2007, she published her findings, which she said later cost me my Senate seat. And that's the truth. I mean, I, I say it's the truth because I know, I know how the system operates. Politicians seldom ever tell the truth. It may also have cost her life. She's dead now. She was murdered. During the night of March 26, 2010, Nancy was shot, was shot execution style in the back of the head in her bed. Her husband, 54 years Bruce Schaefer, was shot point blank in the heart. The Georgia national media whores wrote it off as murder-suicide. And there's an enormous amount of people that know this lady and knew her husband that completely reject murder-suicide. Now, what happened is that she got into a, uh, into a very detailed uh, investigation into the child and family services as it operated in Georgia. Here's what she said. She said, the Adoption and Safe Families Act set in motion by President Bill Clinton offers cash bonuses to the states for every child they adopted out to foster care. In order to receive the adoption incentive bonuses, local child protective services need more children. They must have merchandise, children, that sell, and you must have plenty of them so the buyer can choose. Some counties are known to give, as, give a $4,000 payment for each child not returned to their family. These are not my words. These are the words of a state senator from Georgia who did the work who did the research and got into the corruption that was going on inside the child and family services. Now, there's a, you'll see in a minute why that I start with this, because you'll see the tie-in. Now, this is not a blanket condemnation of child and family services. And child and family services probably, I guess it exists in every state in the union. But, it's all, but it also has a federal, it's under a federal umbrella. The almighty federal government's tentacles go out into every state. Yes. All right, they only go so deep at this point. But with Obamacare, they will go much deeper. They will go much deeper. Let me say this at the beginning. When Obamacare, if it is ever implemented in this country, it will make Adolf Hitler's Gestapo and what they did in Nazi Germany in the 30s and 40s look like a picnic. And I'm not overstating. It'll make it look like a picnic because Nazi Germany never had the surveillance techniques and ability that they have today. And when all of this, uh, the Constitution of the United States of America has what's called the Fourth Amendment. And the Fourth Amendment says that you are protected from unlawful searches and seizures, that you have a home and that home is your castle 
and that the government cannot just kick your door down and come in anytime they please and take your children out of your house or do whatever they please with your kids or whatever's going on or inspect you or whatever. They can't just do that. There has to be some kind of a motive for it. There has to be some kind of a legal document passed in the court where evidence has been brought before a judge to say there's, re there's, there's reasonable cause to believe something's going on with this child. I'm all for helping children. If a child is in a bad situation, I'm the first one to say, go in there and get that baby out of there. If something's happening to a child, I'm the first one to say that. But the children don't belong to the state. They belong to you. And when the day comes that the almighty federal government has authority over your children and takes it completely away from you, you no longer live in a country, a free country, that freedom's long gone. You live in an authoritarian, antichrist, Gestapo state. And that's exactly what Revelation chapter 13 said is going to happen. And this is exactly where Obamacare is going to lead people. And there's a few voices out there now that's read the legislation that are beginning to warn people and raise a red flag and tell them what's coming if this, if this draconian law is ever implemented into, in, I don't forget the date, whenever it's supposed to come in, 14, 2014, somewhere in there, this thing becomes the law of the land. Once that comes, and all of this under the auspices that it's for your health, all right, this woman is dead. And apparently no real follow-up investigation has taken place as to the cause of her death because of the official murder-suicide that the law stamped on it. Now, there has apparently been no follow-up investigation of her investigation into the corruption in the child and family services. Ought to be, wouldn't you think so? But of course, you know, you might have to do it at the, at the peril of your own life. Now think about it for a minute. She died one of two ways. Either she was, she was killed by her husband or she was killed by an intruder. I believe, because I'm a suspicious person anyway, I have to confess that to you. I'm not a very trusting soul. <laughs> What's going on over here, you know? What are you talking about? What's the real motive behind what you're saying? That's the idea. But that'll save you from a lot of trouble. It really will. So if this woman was murdered by, a, by, by elements connected with the child and family services and with the investigation she was running, what does that say to you? What does that say? What's that say? What's the message? What's the message? You better believe it. And not only don't get in our way, we are ruthless. We will kill you. All right? We will do away with you, and we have the power of the courts and the badges to do as we please with you. Revelation 13 exactly what the antichrist will do see here's the big here's the big here's the big uh, deceit upon people they think that everything's going to flow along hunky dory and they're going to have all their freedoms and america is going to be america and everything's going to be fine and sweet and all of a sudden bang we're going to be raptured out of here and then everything just goes to pot overnight nothing can be further from the truth it's all been going to pot it's all been staged for some time the preparations were laid a long time ago. And when we're caught out of here, we're going to be thankful we're caught out of here. Because you're going to see the wave coming. You're going to see the tsunami as it comes. They say the animals up there in the zoo in Washington, D.C. or somewhere in New York, the other day right before that earthquake hit, they said those animals were going crazy. And nobody had a clue why they were so upset. Well, the reason they were upset is because they could sense something the people couldn't sense. That's, that, to me, that's a perfect illustration of spiritual discernment. Can you see, folks, it's not reversing. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. Now, George Orwell's 1984 is a Sunday school picnic compared to what's really coming down the road. And it's not coming. It's here. So this lady's dead. And you can get on the Internet, type her name in, find the church she went to. She's a, she's a fine, decent Christian lady and had great respect. Uh, by the people who knew her, and so was her husband. And these people were well known, and uh, all kinds of lies apparently have been created since then to, you know, support, support, to, to do whatever they can to destroy his, him and turn him into a killer so they can, so they can push their, uh, uh, the idea of murder-suicide. So, uh, so Nancy Schaefer has gone on uh, to be with the Lord, and that's, I believe, is where she is. Good Christian lady. 
In Georgia, they have what's called the Georgia Guidestones. The Georgia, 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 State Senator Georgia. In Georgia, they have the Georgia Guidestones. Now, I haven't done research on this, but if some of you would like to do this, find out, it tells you what county it's in, find out the coordinates of this thing. Find out where it is. For example, like, uh, like uh, uh, Stonehenge, I've been to Stonehenge, that's quite a thing to see. But in the, in the summer solstice and the winter solstice, when that light comes shining through, it hits a certain point inside that thing every time. It is, in other words, whoever set it up knew, knew astrology. They knew the signs of the heavens. And it marked a spot. And uh, occultists are very big on this kind of thing. So I'd find out exactly where these stones are located uh, in coordinates, you know, uh, uh, longitude, latitude, right down to the very... Uh, pinpoint spot and find out where it is and see if it has any significance like that. I just haven't had time to do it. But a man came in down there and he hired a, a monument company to, uh, to create these things and here's what they have on it. Here's the message of the Georgia Guide Stones. Maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. Guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity. Unite humanity with a living new language. Rule passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. Protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. Let all nations rule. Yeah, fair laws, just courts. Laws are written by the rich people. You understand that, don't you? All right. Uh, let all nations rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court. Avoid petty laws and useless officials. I agree with that one. <laughs> Balance personal rights with social duties. Balance personal rights with social duties. Prize truth, beauty, love, seeking harmony with the infinite. That's supposed to be God. Be not a cancer on the earth. Leave room for nature. Leave room for nature. So what is this? This is the manifesto of the New World Order. They want you to believe. They want you to have faith. They just don't want you to have that exclusive faith that says that the Lord Jesus Christ is the only way, the only salvation of mankind. There is no other name given under heaven. That's out. That's out. You, they, want you to, they want you to have faith because the Antichrist is going to be a spiritual being. How do you know that? The Bible says the false prophet caused the world to worship him. So worship is involved in the Antichrist. Now... When I bring up worship, we just had worship in the city. How many are aware of that? The local TV station's been pushing this big time, okay? All right, I saw that, I saw their logo on TV and a red flag flew up. I said, did I see what I thought I saw? <laughs> when I saw that, I thought, there's something going on here, big time. So I got on their website and I made a copy of their logo. How many of you see what I see? How far, some of you are so far away, oh, you can see the paper, but uh, if you'll notice, there's a crescent moon right here in the middle and a pentagram. Now, if you are absolutely and completely just one day old, born again, and don't know zip, we'll forgive you. Okay? <laughs> I don't believe that's the case. I believe this is by design. There's a crescent moon in the center and a pentagram on their logo. You say, what are you saying, preacher? I'm not saying anything. What do you think? You remember what I told you about the pineal gland, the third eye, the center of the forehead, chakras, kundalini yoga, serpent rising up, power, serpent power rising up through the spine, base of the spine so is the beginning, seven points of power throughout the body, and then eventually the seventh point is when the serpent itself rises above the head, and like a brother called my attention to the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh has a serpent. You ever seen that one? Rising above the head. That pineal gland is right smack in the middle of your head. That's supposed to be the location of the third eye. The third eye is that spiritual chakra point of spiritual, super spiritual vision. All right? It's that, it's that ability to see what the masses cannot see. I took this off of a website last night. Anybody recognize the gentleman? 
Notice where that's located. Where is it located? Right smack in the center of the forehead, third eye. See that? Do you know what this website's called? Obama the Messiah. How many of you ever thought about George Bush the Messiah, or Richard Nixon the Messiah, or Tricky Dick the Messiah, or, you know, on it goes? Never happened, has it? Oh, they didn't? Yeah, it was in. I, I oh, was no. Yeah, uh -huh. and they were parallel in the Bible with different things. The he didn't have a place to stay. Oh, okay. I see the point now. Yeah, like the like there was no room in the end. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm following you now. Okay. <laughs> right. Well, that's exactly what we're getting into here. It's, uh, it's the third eye. And the reason I do this is because the occult world knows its symbols and they know their marks, and they know when a mark has been placed on something. They don't, even, they don't even need to say anything. They know when it's been done. Once it's done, then they know that whatever needed to be done in that area is done. It's finished, you know, it's ready. And so here we have the President of the United States of America, which there are millions of people in this country who do not believe for one minute that he is an American. They believe he's an illegal alien. And Jerome Corsi, C-O-R-S-I, you ought to read his book. He's a real smart fellow. And he still doesn't believe that uh, Mr. Obama, he believes he's a Kenyan. He believes he was born in Kenya and that he has, uh, he has illegally usurped the office of the presidency. And the thing that I, ma that I marvel about is that with the idea of the presidency, we know that he has to be a natural born citizen. He has to be, I think, what's it, 35 years old, so forth. But it had never, I don't think it had ever been challenged up until this point. A law in the Constitution is one thing. To enforce it is something else. So what you are seeing now is a law in the Constitution. You're seeing how it's going to be enforced. Isn't that amazing? Have you watched that? Have you observed it? Have you observed how quickly Fox News, the one who no spin zone, the, uh, the one who's looking out for you? You believe that? <laughs> well, anyway... Uh, they were quick to jump on the bandwagon that Obama is a citizen and to throw out the door the idea that he's not born in this country. Well, that's really, really not the issue. The issue is what they're making out of him. What's that around his head? It's called a nimbus. It's a halo. It's a nimbus. It's an ancient uh, occult symbol. And uh, here's one that says Obama is God. Now, in the Bible, do you know what that's called? It's called blasphemy. All right, notice how that, uh, that you, as a Christian, they hang on every word you say and pick you to death as being intolerant and ignorant and backward. All right, but they can say anything they please. And anybody that knows anything about us knows that we believe that's blasphemy. Here's, pardon? Well, that's what I'm pulling up next. <laughs> Newsweek. <laughs> uh, uh, here's Newsweek, and it's got uh, Obama. He's got uh, six arms. Six arms, and he's juggling everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anytime you got more than two arms, you get into the occult world. Uh huh. He's got six arms. Now here is a. Uh, here's a. Uh, Here's one with Obama with a with the nimbus, the halo around his head in front of a cross. Okay. Okay. They don't stop there, they continue. But it seems like these photographs they have of him either were photoshopped, many of them were, no doubt about that, but some of them probably original. Here's another one with Obama and the and, and the light from behind his head, a nimbus, you know, holy, sacred, Messiah. And then here is the blasphemy of blasphemies. He's on a cross. He's on a cross. He's on a cross. Now, I'll leave these up here in the pulpit, and you can, you can see them when I'm finished. He's on a cross. You can get on the website, uh, 
Obama the Messiah. Let me see, I don't know what the URL's the bottom down here. Bottom corner, this is the web address. You can get on the website. See it for yourself. <coughs> He's on a cross. Okay. And here he is standing, uh, speaking, and here he is with a, uh, uh, with, a, with a nimbus, the halo, around his head. What have they done? He's no longer a president to these people. What is he to these people? He's a savior. He's a messiah to them, see. He's no longer a political figure. He becomes a religious figure. No. Well, that's very true because his policies have completely failed. I mean, how many of you are better off? We got people in this church losing their jobs, you know, and all that. But anyway, uh, they're talking about him now. The, uh, the media calls him some sort of a god. And, of course, they choose their words very carefully so they can back out later on. Here's two more, here's two more shots of him with a nimbus around his head. All right, Mr. Obama. I would say to these people, if they ever did that to me, hold on. I got nothing to do with that. Get me out of there. I, re I, re I reject this publicly. I renounce this. This bunch doesn't belong to me. Forget this. I have no part with what's going on here. When they fell down before those apostles in the book of Acts and called them gods, they said, get up from where you are. We're not gods. Amen. They were quick to let them know that they were not gods. But nary a word from uh, Mr. Obama about this. Uh, apparently it fits in with the scheme. So what's going on? That's what it is because it's going to, it, it'll be an empire. Um, the European Union has a permanent president. His name is uh, Van Rompu. He could not get individual European countries to act on a financial crisis, but Obama did. And so doing, he has performed a bloodless coup, becoming the de facto president of the European Union. The CNN called him the president of the world. What's happening here is that there's considerable evidence that looks like that Obama may put some stock into being reelected in this country, but he may realize that that, uh, that, that, uh, that the financial situation may keep him from doing that, but he's got his, sets, he's got his sights set higher. Amen. He wants to be over the whole world. Yes, and as the president of the European Union, he'll have power over the whole uh, European uh, uh, continent. So I don't know what's going to lead, I don't know what it'll lead to, but I do believe that they are grooming him for a position that, uh, that, uh, that the Bible calls the Antichrist. Now, I want you to look at Obamacare for just a moment, okay? 900 pages. This came from Mr. Obama. 900 pages. And this is the most intrusive piece of legislation that has ever come out of Washington, D.C. It is unbelievable at what they want to do. Now, I want to give you seven points. These are just generalizations, but this is what Obamacare will focus upon. Number one. They will create healthier school environments, including increasing healthy food options, physical activity opportunities, promotion of healthy lifestyle, emotional wellness, and prevention curricula, and activities to prevent chronic diseases. All this sounds good on the surface. Here's the problem. When the federal government gets involved in anything, it completely controls whatever it's in. And when it gets into it, it creates all these little sub-agencies and people's lives are going to be pried into like you would not believe. Because who says that a child has a healthy environment? They want to know what kind of environment your children have at home. Creating the infrastructure to support active living and access to nutritious foods in a safe environment. Developing and promoting programs targeting a variety of age levels to increase access to nutrition, physical activity, Smoking cessation, improve social and emotional wellness, enhance safety in a community, or address any other chronic disease priority area identified by the so forth. They are going to get into the social life of your children, which will bring them right into the house where they live, and a psychiatrist or a psychologist is going to evaluate your children to see if, they are, see if they are living in a wholesome atmosphere. Wholesome to these people means that whatever your religion might be, it's going to have to agree with the religion of the New World Order. Obamacare, therefore, has already begun to create this 
huge hierarchy that comes right into the very house where your children live, accessing, assessing and implementing worksite wellness programming and incentives. When you go to the job site, wherever you work, the federal government is going to get personally involved in where you work, how you work, who your boss is, how you relate to each other. Do you have a Bible study at your work site? Your Bible study had better be according to the dictates of what they hand down from Washington. Do you, what, whatever kind of a spiritual enhancement that they can give to your work site. For example, they have discovered that if they have you do yoga, you remember the yoga, that you can perform better. They may have you throughout the day listening to some kind of a spiritual music or whatever, the federal government, when it gets involved, will use you as the guinea pig. They always have and always will. Working to highlight healthy options at restaurants and other food venues, when you go out to eat, think of it, Big Brother's gonna be right there, the feds, where you go to eat. Yeah, prioritizing strategies to reduce racial and ethnic disparities, including social, economic and geographic detriments of health, determinants rather of health, and addressing special populations needs, including all age groups and individuals with disabilities and individuals in both urban and rural areas. My goodness. Have you heard about the death panel? Have you heard about Obama's death panel? It's called the Independent Payment Advisory Board. That's a nice sounding term for the bunch that gets together to determine whether you receive treatment or not. That's all. They don't kill you uh, unless, they unless they get into <laughs> euthanasia. What they do is just withhold treatment. Did you know they're doing that in Great Britain right now? They're going to be doing it right here. Yeah. Well, I know that's the... What you're, you're talking about, but what I'm talking about is the oversight of the federal government itself to see to it that you don't get treatment. <laughs> In other words, they block you from going to any hospital or any doctor. You can't get medication. If they put you on the list to where you are, you are, you are going to die, then you're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, what kind, ask yourself this question tonight, this morning. What kind of a hierarchy produces that kind of, uh, of, uh, of uh, authoritarian legislation? That's right, they're fascist. The Constitution doesn't mean a thing to these people. Now, if they killed this uh, state senator, Mrs. Schaefer from Georgia, if they killed her, and I believe they did, I don't know who they are, I don't know who particularly pulled the trigger, I mean, Folks, you're talking about a bunch of people who took weapons out there west and they, sh and they, and they, and they shipped them down into Mexico and, to, and, and some of their own agents wound up getting shot to death by the very weapons that they put down there Amen. that they sent down, automatic weapons, AK-47s, whatever else they had. Automatic weapons, folks. They sent these weapons down into Mexico uh, for some kind of a trumped up idea where they could trace them and get into the, and get into the drug trade and so forth and so on. And to this very day, the, the Attorney General has stonewalled the investigation and will not cooperate. And the, Fed, and, and, and the Senators up there are frustrated because they can't get any more information about what happened down there. There are good people in Washington. Everybody in Washington is not out to kill you. But the problem is, if the, if, when Election Day comes in 2012 in November, if I'm still here, if there ever was a church that's been informed, <laughs> you'll be informed. It's my responsibility to let you know that when you walk into that booth and you push that button, that you know who you're pushing that button for. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you're held accountable for that. Amen. You're responsible to God Almighty right. for who you vote for. That's right. And you could, something could still be done. There's still enough people out here in this country to turn it around. If you could do it. Yes, sir.
Yeah, harmful to homosexuals. Yeah, we're not harmful, we're, uh, we're dangerous. Right. The term homosexual is a non-existent term. It has no meaning whatsoever. It was created in a laboratory. The, 200 years ago, the term did not exist, probably. You can go back and look at a dictionary that was made in the 1800s. It's not even in there. What do you mean, preacher? They create a term in some laboratory or in some college to define something or describe it where the Bible already has a definition and a description for it. It's called sodomy. No, it's not exact. It's not a science. It's a bunch of mumbo jumbo garbage. Yes, sir. That's and that's true. This is what's coming. Right. Now here's here's what's going on. Europe has already fallen. Okay. Europe's already fallen. China is in the book of Revelation as that 200 million horsemen. The only thing on, this fa on the face of this earth that's stopping the new world order right now from taking over this world is America. And the elections of 2012, it looks to me like what's happening is it's all coming down to that will be the most important election this nation has ever had is who they put in office in 2012. In 2012, you need to clean the Senate, you need to clean the House, and you sure need to clean the White House. In 2012. Yes, sir. Preacher, two things. There have been some ads on television radio about uh, sending money to buy backpacks and put nutritious food on Friday for kids so they can take it home over the weekend and eat the food and then bring the backpack back to school on Monday and they'll fill it again. That may be a lower level step of seeing food that parents are making sure those kids are eating that food and if they're not, check into it and things of that nature. Yeah. Then on the other hand, maybe a lower level is we deliver folks to dialysis here in Knoxville and um, that's a very lucrative situation and I can't tell you how many people on dialysis that have been refused kidney transplants from their own family members because they say we pick who's going to give you the kidney and not you. And therefore, they stay on that transplant or on that uh, dialysis. And if you, you go three days a week, and some folks are three to four hours a day going there, and they, they make $4,000 a day every time you go to dialysis. So that's $12,000 a week just for one person a lot of money to go. There. And there's some folks that have been on dialysis for almost 10 years, and you can see it, it just obliterates the body oh, yeah. over that time frame let alone the emotions of the person. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. I have three grandchildren in my family that have been illegally, illegally, illegally taken from their parents? Mm -hmm. So you've got first-hand experience. Parents lo no longer have any rights with their own children. Three of them. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. And traumatize these young girls to the point where they were just sitting there crying and some of them tried to refuse to, to disrobe and they forced them to disrobe. And then they went home traumatized and told their parents, the parents were in an uproar. The parents took them to court and then uh, the, the kids, the courts ruled that the, the, the school was 
that the parents lose all rights to their children once they enter into that school. Okay, did you hear that? That makes you want to homeschool, doesn't it? <clears throat> you see what's going on? Yes, ma'am. fingerprinting them. There's your surveillance, there's your technology from cradle to grave. They want to mark they want to they want to monitor every move you make. <coughs> no, you wouldn't think of it. What possible reason do they have to fingerprint those children in case one's abducted, carried off, what have you? See? See what's going on? You got to stop the government. You got to stop them, folks. You got these are nothing but bureaucrats and politicians. They're here today and gone tomorrow. But once they start this stuff, they don't they, they don't know how to end anything. Yes, sir. In a couple years, they want to start putting chips in. Sure, they will. Yeah. Now, what do you do when they want to put a chip in your disability? Yeah. If they don't get it, they cut you off. They cut you off. Yeah, they cut you off. They're talking about it right now. Yeah. Yeah, but you see, 20 years ago, that they are all dead. Yeah. It's that bunch that's up there now. Yeah. And the idea is you can throw that bunch out and replace them. Exactly. That's what voting's about. That's right. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah, how many in here have children? School-age children. School-age children or grandchildren. I've got grandchildren. All right. Yes, sir. They're working on, I don't know if they did it this past weekend or the week before that or this coming weekend, but they're um, having kids come downtown to Market Square, and they give them, put them through this little thing where they uh, enlighten them about stuff, and they provide your children with a computer uh, chip uh, device that's a badge that they can wear either as a badge and they can put in their pocket or as a wristband. And they, the kids carry these around. It's, it's, you know, you see the good I, goodness behind it. I can find my kid if they get lost. But they're fingerprinting the children. They're giving them photo IDs. And the that's what that's about. They're it's, watching. Yeah, that's what that's about. So many children are abducted. Yeah. I didn't get into this with this lady, with this lady right here, uh, because of the fact of time. But she found in her investigation, the state senator from Georgia, she discovered that many of these children go to foster homes temporarily and then they wind up out here god only knows where that there is a huge market in this country for children it's the occult world that wants your kids and they have no good in mind for them now i don't know of anything worse on the face of this earth i'd just soon be dead and gone in a heartbeat than to imagine my child is in the hands of some Satanist. And this is what she got into, folks. Go to look it for yourself. Her name is Schaefer. What's her first name? Nancy Schaefer. Type that name into Google and just read it. It's all over the Internet if you'll take a little bit of time and read what it says about Nancy Schaefer. Well, you know, the Sodomites' agenda is not that they want grown men. They want the boys and the girls. They certainly do. And of course, we know what's happened. They've sodomized the military. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, they get money. I didn't get into the money part. And they're allowed seven kids in their home. Yeah. Ninety-five percent of the time, the parents that take these foster kids are not even home. They're all somewhere else. We've emptied the house, giving out tracks. And we found out the kids are home by themselves, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
Good night. out of time. Let's one more and we gotta go. Uh-huh, it is. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. Thank you, brother. Brother Roger Lee, will you dismiss us?